Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Corsair M95 Performance MMO Gaming Mouse. The M95 is the newest iteration of the Corsair M90 Gaming Mouse. The mouse is designed for the complex demands of massively multiplayer and real-time strategy games. It offers easy programming, 15 intelligently positioned buttons, and onboard storage for unique button setups for each game. The Advanced 8200 DPI laser sensor is designed to give great performance, ultra high sensitivity for precise tracking and control. It has an aluminum frame which provides high rigidity and optimal mass distribution. The chassis feels incredibly sturdy and the weight gives the mouse a very robust sense of control and balance. The top surface has a slightly grainy matte surface that allows for smooth finger movement while delivering a nice gripping area. As you see here, the right click button is tapered back and slightly sloped. The scroll wheel is placed further back on the mouse than I've experienced with any other mice. Here we see it in comparison with the Razer Taipan, a mouse I've been most recently using and have reviewed. They both share a very similar sloping design, although the Corsair is slightly wider and has a lot more weight to it. Each has a very similar grainy matte surface. Here it is alongside the Logitech G500, a mouse I've gamed with for quite some time. What I like about most Logitech mice is their height, and the Corsair comes very close to having the same elevation. When viewed from above, we can see that the G500 is longer and slightly wider. You can also see how pronounced the right click button is sloped. That's something I'm going to cover in the pros and cons of the mouse. Here it is alongside the SteelSeries Sensei, and the Corsair's 15 programmable buttons really distinguishes itself from the other gaming mice such as the Razer Naga or Logitech G600. The buttons are very responsive and snappy. They have a great ergonomic placement. However, you're probably going to want to read the PDF manual if you want the most out of the button's performance. This leads us to connection, software, and setup. If you like, you can connect the mouse to ensure that the computer will find it. Navigate to the Corsair website and locate the mice and keyboard link. I found it a lot simpler to locate the drivers by simply utilizing the search feature. Once you've located the M95 information, you can simply download the content. As a suggestion, I would recommend extracting the content to your desktop and be sure you keep the PDF instruction manuals. Okay guys, so now we're going to take a look at the software. I'm going to go over just the very basics, just the general usage of the mouse. I would encourage you to read the PDF information as far as the instructions so that you guys can go into more of the advanced type setting. So basically looking at it, I'm going to leave it as profile 1 default. The MR is for your macro. So you can set up whatever type of macros you want. This is the on and off for the light on the actual mouse itself. As you can see here, the various key functions. Hardware play, if you select this, it will run directly from the mouse memory and settings within the mouse as opposed to going through the software. Manage performance pretty straightforward. First DPI button is going to be default to 800. Second DPI I've set it to 1900. Third DPI and then for those who play FPS as sniper mode and 400 you can assign sniper mode button to whichever of the particular macro buttons you would like. And it takes a second or two for it to go back to the previous setting. Manage profile. Obviously, you can go in here. You can create a new profile if you like. Leave mine at 1, default. So I'll go ahead and delete that. Now, going back to assigning buttons, as you can see here, 1 is going to be left click, 2, right click, 3, mouse wheel. Pretty standard fare. So let's take a look, for example, of button 10. It is essentially behind what I set as my back button. So technically, 8 and 9 would be your typical forward back button on any other mouse. On this one, it defaulted to 7, and I changed it to no function at all. So 9, I made my back because of where my hand rests. It feels more comfortable here. And number 10, I set to a keystroke, and then that, use that equal sign as my default for my mumble channel. And what you're going to want to do now is we're going to go over just some of the basics again. So play options here, you have the first setting. This is going to be the playback once. So you hit the button, it plays once. This next button is uh, playback a number of times. If you want to 
hit the button and have it do a series of processes. This button is um, repeat. So if you hit a single button, it will repeat a certain message a number of times. And then this one is play until stop. Uh, delay options, 50 milliseconds is the base default. If you want to change it, I would suggest again, go back into your PDF, look through it, see what you like. If you want to set it to a certain sensation. Advanced options for keys. You click within the center box here and you can make it a command. As you can see here is a list of different commands for it. You can go into the advanced commands and have it do a function. So we're going to go over here to button options and I'm going to select 10. And now to make this a key strike, I'm going to click in the center of the uh, field here and then I'm going to select keystroke. Then I'm going to hit the plus button. This will bring up my field here so now I can enter any keystroke and I'll do that now by using equals. And now equals is my keystroke and I'll click OK. So now number 10 is set to equals. So now to know if this is actually working, we can go ahead and close this if you want. We'll right click on the desktop and we'll go to text, double click and then hit the button and as you can see it is now equals. So essentially that's kind of the basics setups of the mouse. As far as the pros and cons of this mouse, let's start with the cons. The thing that struck me most when I put my hand on the mouse was the tapered and sloped right click button. My middle finger dangled off the end making it feel very awkward for gripping. The sensation was very pronounced. The mouse scroll wheel is set too far back. You have to nearly make a conscious effort to articulate your finger to reach the scroll wheel and once you do, the click scroll wheel button is very hard to actuate and you may inadvertently push a side button to get the grip leverage you need to actuate the scroll wheel button. The pros are that the mouse's aluminum chassis is very well constructed, giving the mouse an added sense of durability. The buttons, surface, and weight of the mouse provide a great balance and accuracy of usage. If you're an MMO player, this mouse is a great option as its 15 programmable buttons allows you a wide range of macros and settings. The mouse may not be so ideal if you're an FPS player, but I wouldn't completely rule it out for that. I hope you guys enjoyed the unboxing and review. If you have any questions or feedbacks, be sure to include that in the comments section below. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for further unboxings and reviews. Thanks for watching.